The fifth word, I thirst. In John chapter 19. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, and so they took, put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Psalm 69 details the suffering and the death of Jesus hundreds of years prior to it occurring. Jesus fulfills scripture, and so today we hear, I thirst. The psalm speaks of this. They gave me poison for food, and for my thirst they gave me sour wine to drink. Jesus Christ is fully man. Conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he took upon human flesh, the humanity assumed into the divinity, so that there's still only one Christ, and yet there are two natures. That this is a mystery, but it is exactly what Scripture teaches. As true man, Christ has thirst. As the divinely appointed Christ, he fulfills Scripture. The divinity humiliates or lowers itself to something as basic as thirst. That he that formed the seas by the word now craves water for his parched throat. Because it was all now finished. The work of salvation had been completed, but the victory of the work being finished had to be announced yet. And Jesus, being true man, suffering as he has, needs moisture to let go the cry of triumph from his lungs, through his throat, and out of his mouth. He thirsts. When Jesus had come out to Samaria, he was tired, and he sat at Jacob's well. He told the woman to give him something to drink. Through the conversation that ensued, he spoke of a living water that once someone drank from it, they would never thirst again. He went on to confess that he was the one with this living water, and that he indeed is the Christ. Jesus dies as our substitute. That's why he becomes fully man, to stand in our place. As true God, he is the living water that anyone may drink of him and never thirst. And yet a true man, he sits beneath suffering and judgment as our substitute. And the one who has living water cries out, I thirst. This is Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. And this is how God has come to be with us as our substitute and our Redeemer. To the cry of thirst, the soldiers offer up sour wine. Jesus knew they would. Psalm 69 said so. To the request for water, they give sour wine using a branch of hyssop. The ancient plant used in the rites and rituals of cleansing and atonement for the children of God. Then, hyssop was used to sprinkle blood upon the altar and the people of God. At the crucifixion, it is used to prop up sour wine in answer to the Savior's cry for thirst. It foreshadowed a cleansing. And in its use at the crucifixion, it is part of that eternal, once-for-all cleansing by the blood of Jesus. It is part of that once-and-for-all atonement, not made by animal sacrifice, but by the very sacrifice of God made man, the sacrifice of the Christ, the Savior of the world. The work of Jesus cleanses. The work of Jesus atones. There is no other way. Take heart today, dear Christians. 
Jesus has suffered in your place. He has been your true substitute. He has cleansed you by the bloody atonement at Calvary. From him comes living water, which quenches all thirst. He is the gift of God and the water. The salvation that he brings forms a fountain inside of you, springing up into everlasting life. By faith in his finished work, you indeed worship the true God of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus, amen.